Coming up on Mountain News this morning, members of an Eastern Kentucky congregation are searching for answers after their place of worship is vandalized. And police in Corbin investigate reports of racist flyers being found in the streets after similar situations were reported in other areas of the Commonwealth. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. The time is 6 a.m. on your Thursday. I'm Keaton Hall and Brandon, it's starting to get a little warmer out there. The sun's coming up. How's it looking? Not too bad so far. Some patchy fogs around the region this morning. But other than otherwise, it looks pretty good out there to start your day on this Friday Eve, also known as Thursday. Let's take a look. Going up on the mountain there, Pine Mountain, Whitesburg Mountain, US 119, 61. No major issues out there. There's probably going to be some haze today that's going to filter our sunshine just a little bit. So if it's not a bright blue sky and a sunny day, completely sunny day. Don't worry too much about it. We've got some more wildfire smoke coming down from Canada here in the next couple of days. But uh, again, some of our neighbors to the north bad shape. Minneapolis, St. Paul under air quality alerts because they've got those air qualities. If you know anything about air quality, uh, 300s. So again, that's pretty rough out there. Normal air quality, good air quality is 50. So pretty stout this morning. Temperatures across our region, 50s and 60s. We're in the 50s in Clintwood, Wise, Irvin, and Ashland. Everybody else is in the 60s this morning and that's a few degrees warmer than this time yesterday in some spots Jonesville Middlesboro the winters 12 and 13 excuse me 13 and 12 degrees warmer but you go to the north Moorhead and Prestonsburg are the winners that way if you consider that five and seven degrees colder this morning depending on where you are what is today's forecast well in jeopardy style for 400 it is sun and clouds or what is sun and clouds with scattered chances for showers so we got to put that in the form of the question Kate I almost messed that up 83 a daytime high out there just to dodge some raindrops I think you'll be okay Keaton you may not have got the points on that one Brandon I'm sorry all right, a, con a congregation in Floyd County is searching for answers while praying for the people who vandalized their fellowship hall. WYMT's Buddy Forbes has more about the break-in at Little Salem Old Regular Baptist Church. Little Salem Old Regular Baptist Church has been planning a fundraiser for a new heating and cooling system. It's been down and it's just been church, you know, pretty hard and, and pretty uncomfortable. But the temperature was not as uncomfortable as what members found when vandals recently broke into the church fellowship hall. They defecated on the items that we were going to have for sale. They you know, busted our oven doors, um, you know, stole stuff out of our refrigerator. I mean, just absolute vandalism. The space covered in glass, urine and debris no longer felt like the community center it has been for generations. The, this lunchroom hosts baby showers. It, you know, it hosts wedding receptions. It's hosted family reunions, Christmas parties. For everybody in the community, I mean, this church is, is open for everybody. And they never really ask for anything in return. And it's just sad that somebody would take advantage of them like this. Now, though the reason and vandals remain unknown, the church is looking for more ways to raise money with many of the things meant to be part of the fundraiser no longer usable. Maybe they would do the right thing and come forward um, because it just leaves so many questions unanswered on with why we've helped so many people and why somebody would want to try to, to, to destroy what we have. As community members take their fundraisers virtual, leaving the search for answers to a higher power. We just want to pray for them. Uh, mainly because, you know, it's so sad that, that they would want to do this to anybody, more or less a church, and especially a little community church like this that has, has helped everybody. In Floyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. The online auction can be found on Facebook. Case hopes the fundraisers will provide enough money to replace the heating and cooling system and purchase a security system. Police in Corbin are looking into reports of racist flyers being spread throughout the city. The flyers claim to be from the Ku Klux Klan. They say to be on the lookout for drugs or criminal activity. Neighbors are concerned about where they're coming from and say they're unwelcome. Michael Jones found a bunch of folded up flyers in his neighborhood on Tuesday. Altogether, it's garbage. And I feel like that if when they come to our town, if they s suggest or even insinuate that they're going to do anything, that they should be escorted out of town. Corbin police say they're not sure if the KKK is actually behind this, this or if it's someone just trying to stir up trouble. 
Corbin's mayor says the fires were found in just one section of the city. People from Paris and Mount Sterling say similar papers were found there as well. Monica Harden, the girlfriend of Stephen Shing Shang, who is accused of killing Scott County Deputy Caleb Conley, is now in custody in Ohio. We told you before she was wanted on theft charges, among others, in the state. She appeared in Franklin County Court after being arrested before being sent back to Ohio. She's accused of being with Xing Shang when he reportedly went on the rampage that ended in the deputy's death. It's not clear if she will face more charges in connection to that tragic incident. And a Olive Hill police officer who was injured after being shot at at shot at is now out of the hospital. Kentucky State Police told us yesterday he was treated and released after being hurt by broken glass. Police say the suspect shot through the officer's window as he was sitting in his cruiser. 30 year old Wesley Cornell is now charged with the attempted murder of a police officer and wanton endangerment against an officer. He's in the Carter County Detention Center on a $1 million bond. The drug epidemic is an issue that continues to plague the region, but two southeastern Kentucky law enforcement agencies have teamed up to do something about it. WMT's Liz Williams checked in with the Laurel County Sheriff's Office and the London Police Department to learn more. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office has had a drug interdiction team for several years, but in January of 2023, it announced it would be expanding its mission. Now, in addition to our investigators that we have in our department, we have London City Police that has uh, partnered with us, and uh, along with HIDA, and b between the three of us, we have a lot more investigators than we ever had before. Through funding from the organization Appalachia High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area, the Sheriff's Office and the London Police Department are able to carry on this work. The officers that are on that task force get paid uh, federal overtime funded by HIDA uh, to, to do drug interdiction in, in and around Laurel County. Gilbert Achardo with the Laurel County Sheriff's Office says in the six months this partnership has happened, he has seen a change in the area. We probably have seen at least a 25% decrease in uh, DUI fatal crashes, uh, in thefts and burglaries in the area, and we're striving for more and for better. And I think with, with the teamwork concept that we have, that we're going to see a decrease. London Police Chief Chuck Johnson says the task force has worked to remove numerous amounts of meth, fentanyl, and other deadly substances from the streets of Laurel County. Uh, but not only are they work, staying busy working drugs, all of the officers at the police department, all the deputies at the sheriff's office are continually fighting the war on drugs, for, for lack of better terms to put it. You know, it's a, it may be a fight that we never win, but we're going to keep fighting it. Hoping to continue curbing the drug epidemic in southeast Kentucky. In London, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office Public Affairs Deputy Gilbert Achardo says the task force has also called on the help of surrounding counties in cracking down on certain drug trafficking operations. Lawmakers are discussing a change to laws surrounding the prosecution of drug traffickers in Kentucky. House Bill 388 was introduced earlier this year. The bill will allow drug traffickers who are directly or indirectly involved in overdose deaths due to illegal drugs to be charged with murder instead of the current maximum charge of second degree manslaughter. In the Big Sandy, Floyd County Attorney Keith Bartley says he agrees that this change needs to happen, but says it may take more than just the single bill. The action has to be consistent with the laws that they pass, uh, the criminal laws in this case. So how they're going to make that murder when I know as a lawyer that murder requires an intent to bring about the ultimate outcome is beyond me. Bartley says if the bill were to pass, he believes that the result would be less overdose related deaths. Attorney General Daniel Cameron announced another multi-billion dollar opioid settlement yesterday. $17.3 billion were announced as part of a national settlement between companies Teva and Allergan and pharmacies CVS and Walgreens. Kentucky will receive $317 million during a 15 year span. The money is expected to start flowing into the state by the end of this year. Settlement also requires Teva to ensure systems are in place to prevent opioid misuse and prevents Allergan from selling opioids for the next 10 years. Governor Andy Bashir is looking for a team to finish the final section of the Mountain Parkway expansion. 
final project segment is known as McGoffin Floyd, and it is planned to be a 13 mile stretch of four lane highway from US 460 in Salyersville to Highway 404 in Prestonsburg. Kentucky Transportation Cabinet plans to award the project by this fall. An early heads up to drivers in Morgantown Co County, Morgan County. Construction will start on Monday on a $2.6 million project on US 460. The work includes asphalt surfacing, minor widening, and drainage structure replacement. Travel between West Liberty and Frenchburg will be affected. The project is expected to be completed by November 1st. The Southern Baptist Convention has rejected an appeal by two churches, including one in Louisville, after they were ousted for having women pastors. Came during an annual meeting of the nation's largest pro Protestant denomination, whose statement of faith asserts only qualified men can serve as pastors. Messengers also approved a resolution condemning gender-affirming care and all forms of gender transition interventions. Six eleven here on this Thursday morning. We continue to track just a little bit of patchy fog, but otherwise not too bad to start today. A little warmer this morning too. Let's take a look at the Mountain Parkway camera up near the Slade, or it's near Slade, near the Wolf Pound County line up there. Fifty nine light traffic, a little bit of haze, maybe just a little bit of fog. It's hard to tell this morning because I think we're seeing not too much going on in the skies. Just maybe that haze, just a little bit. Temperatures in Irvine and Moorhead, Ashland as well. Clintwood and Wise all in the 50s. Clint was our coldest spot this morning at 55 and we've got 60s everywhere else with 66 in Somerset and 68 in Monticello being some of our warm spots for this afternoon up to about 83. Some spotty rain chances there along the borders, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia. So just kind of keep an eye on that. It should be a fairly nice day with low humidity as well. Keaton. Thanks Brandon and thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. More news is on the way. Coming up, a vigil is held for two students who became some of the victims of a series of violent acts over in the UK.